All right, so let's say we understand these concepts. Let's say from last week we developed our keyword strategy. Let's say then we looked at this uh, marketing document and we filled it out really nice. Let's say we have this plan about what we're going to do on social media or on our website, on our blog. Well, how do we know if we're being effective? One way would be that we, ha we see more money in the cash register, sure. So that's one way to see that all of our efforts are working. But perhaps we don't have that indicator early on, or we, or we don't have that way to indicate our success. We have other ways, which is what the Webmaster Tools will be. This will be a way for the search engines to tell us how many views did your site get, how many hits, how much traffic, which were your most popular pages, what did people click on most, how long did they stay on your site, a wealth of data for free. So we're going to set up the Webmaster Tools for Bing and for Google. In order for us to do that, we need to have your login information for your site. Now if you don't want to do it in class because you don't want to do it in a public lab, that's fine. Follow along, take notes, and then when you get home, watch the video and do it at home. But these computers have deep freeze. These computers have a protection that anything you do on our computers, as soon as they're restarted, it resets. Everything that you did goes away. So if you save something on your desktop and come back next week, it'll be gone. The computers uh, are managed. They have deep freeze. Everything erases. So if you don't want to log into your website information, you don't have to. But as soon as you restart, it'll log you out. It'll delete your cookies, everything. I've got a handout for us to look at, and then we will do this together. Let's go back to the network folder. Remember, open computer window, open network location, classroom Z, classroom data Z, and then scroll down to find campus SEO. And I've got, from last week, instruction one and instruction two. This is new today, actually. Instruction two, webmaster tools. Again, the printer's off at the moment, so you can print it later, but you want to drag instruction two to your desktop or flash drive. And after you've copied it over, close the network, and then open that PDF. Let's take a moment to get you that document, and then we'll look at it together. <clears throat> so let's look at this document, number two, Webmaster Tools. What are the best guidelines? Nowadays, it's harder to be found by potential clients. There's just so much competition. The best advice to rank, however, comes straight from the search engines themselves. So the search engines, to a large degree, will tell you what to do and what not to do. And better yet, they will tell us how effective we are, how many hits we've gotten, and a wealth of information. Before we look at page one, actually, let's jump to page two. page two here. Conversion goals. You must decide the goals of your company early on. In my fictional business, Victor's Bakery, I want people to buy my cupcakes. That's a goal. That's a conversion. In order to get to that goal, I have many conversion goals before that point. Here are a variety of possible goals to accomplish to get to my ultimate goal of selling cupcakes. Let me break some of these down and write some notes. You don't have to do all of these, but the more of these that you can do, the better it may be for, for you to reach that ultimate goal. So here I'll say possible conversions. I've got get followers on Twitter. So that's an aspect of social media. Use social media. In that case, Twitter. And I'm saying get followers on Twitter. Social media, often the big idea there is get followers. Because those, those are a captive audience. 
when a marketer puts a flyer on a car in a parking lot, they are trying to get a conversion. They are trying to have someone look at that flyer and call that number or use that coupon. And a lot of the people that that flyer, a lot of the cars of the people that that flyer goes on are not going to care about that or worse, be mad and throw it away without even looking at it or throw it on the floor. So that's a very scattershot approach. Let me put this flyer to everyone that's in this parking lot. Very few of them will actually care about what's on that, such as, you know, carpet cleaning. Social media, on the other hand, is another way to market to people, to reach a lot of people, to get an audience. But if you do it right, via social media followers, you're going to get an audience that really cares about what you're putting out there. It's like putting that flyer exactly on the cars of those people that need the carpet cleaning. Not just everyone. Not just anyone. So the goal of social media, in a nutshell, is to get followers because they are a captive audience that would care most about your product. And that's a big discussion that is left better for the social media class on Fridays, how to get the followers. But in short, you want to use Twitter, social media, and you want to get followers because that's a captive audience. Get social interactive interactions on Facebook. So Facebook, it's the largest social network in the world. It's got about 1.5 billion users. Not million, billion. The population of the world is like six billion, six and a half or something. A lot of people in the world and a lot of people use Facebook. Therefore, there could potentially be a lot of people that could see your message on Facebook. And let's say I've got 10 followers on Facebook, also known as likes. I've got 10 likes on Facebook. In theory, that might mean that 10 people can see my content. 10 people will see my, my coupon on Facebook. Okay, only 10. But what if I get likes on that coupon shares or comments. So I put that coupon, someone sees it, they click like. Great, I would have rather had them click to buy, but I got a like. And what Facebook does and many of the networks do is that if you like something, it will then tell the friends and family of that person they liked this. So you could reach a few more people. Let's say someone commented on that coupon you put on Facebook. Well, if someone took the time to comment, which is more effort than a like, that might be a more serious <clears throat> person on Facebook to further try to market to. Let's say then what they do is they share. They find that coupon, they like it, they want to share it to their friends and family. And they've got 50 connections on Facebook. I had those 10, but then now this other person had 50. So I've reached possibly 60 people. So I want to use social media, Facebook in this case, to try to get the message, try to get other people to spread my message for me. That's another big goal of, of social media. It's the largest social network here, so use it to spread your content. Reach more people. People get discouraged when they use social media and they say, I'm tweeting every day, but no one pays attention. Again, the social media class we go into more detail, but you're, you might not be tweeting or Facebooking effectively, you might not be Instagramming effectively to reach more people because it builds upon itself. More followers you get, more of those followers could help you get more followers. What I want followers, it's a great ego boost, but I want more followers because that's more of an audience that could buy my product. I want to get site visits via Google Plus. So that's another social network to to learn about Google Plus, created by Google. If you didn't know by now, actually the parent company Google has changed its name. It's no longer called Google, although no one's going to get used to not calling it Google. It's now called Alphabet. This is the company behind Google Search, Google Android, Google Mail, 
Google Plus, all of that is no longer Google. It's Alphabet. Anyway, I'm going to still call it Google. So the Google company created their own social network, Facebook, to compete, I mean Google Plus, to compete with Facebook, to compete with Twitter, Instagram, MySpace, etc. Google created their own network. And you may have never heard of it, about it, or used it, or know anyone that has, but there are hundreds of millions of people that use Google+. And personally, it's my favorite network. I use it like every day. I connect with people on a personal level and find a lot of great people and connect with them. And for business, it works really well too. Another free social network to help you reach an audience. And the thing about Google+, Plus, tied to Google Local, I forget if that's the exact name at the moment. It may be called Google Local or maybe Google Places. These names change all the time. But basically, when we did a search on day one and various restaurants came up, and some of those restaurants appeared in a very nice box with ratings and such, Google Plus. If you create a Google Plus account, you can have a really nice profile on Facebook. Google Plus, on Google, when someone searches on Google, your page might show up with a nice star rating and reviews and such. That's another thing you want to do. Get on Google Plus, create an account there, especially if your business is on a map. If your business is in a physical location, you want that because as more people use mobile and they search taco shops nearby, your taco shop may show up because it's on a map. So one goal that I could have is get visits on my Google Plus. So I need to create a Google Plus. Another goal is get more hits on my home page. So traffic. Uh, it's sort of a catch-22 circular logic. I want more traffic to my website. Great, all you need is more traffic to your website to get more traffic to your website. Well, how do I start the ball rolling? It's all of these things we're talking about in the class, these goals and such. But basically, I want to get traffic to my website from Twitter, from Google+. I may be doing really well on Instagram. I need to remember to have links on my Instagram back to my website. So I'm going to say always lead people back to your website from your social media, from wherever wherever you've gotten impressions from, try to also lead them back to your website, link them back to your website. The reason for that <clears throat> is that you can do the promotion on the social networks, but you can't quite do the sales on your social media yet. You can get a lot of traffic and promotion and buzz and impressions on social media, but you can't do that conversion yet uh, until you get them back to your website. I can't sell that cupcake via a tweet yet. I can't sell it via Facebook yet. Things are changing, uh, but from the beginning, I still had to have someone see that tweet, click a link, and go to my eBay, or my Etsy, or my homepage. And things are changing, and some of the big companies have the ability. You can actually, if you follow Amazon on Twitter, and they tweet a particular product, if you reply to that tweet with the word buy, your credit card will be charged and you bought the product, if you set it up. I might want that one day. I want that when I tweet a great looking cupcake, I want someone to re click reply by and they bought it. We're not there yet for us little people yet, but Amazon has that. Over on Pinterest, you see a cool pin on Pinterest, you like it, there's going to be a buy button, but that's going to be tied to Macy's or Martha Stewart and such, not to us little people yet. Facebook is experimenting with this. I have seen I have seen some Facebook accounts that do have a button that says shop. Uh, not all of them have it yet. They're still working out the kinks. They're doing it with the big companies. 
So let's say for all intents and purposes, us little companies, we still need a website or an eBay or an Etsy or whatever. So we still need to lead them back to our website because I can't collect those donations from a tweet. You know how when a disaster happens and it says text 919 and send $100. I don't, I don't have that yet, but I have my website where I can do what I want on my property, on my website where I have donate now, buy this, subscribe to that. So that's why that's still a goal. It's kind of an obvious one in one sense but not in another, you still want to lead people, you still want more hits, more traffic to your homepage because that's where you could complete your ultimate goal. I want to get more shares on my blog posts from my site. So that assumes you need to blog. You need to write blogs. A good goal, 100 words per month. Once a month you write an article of a hundred words. You can write more, of course. You can write more often, of course. The point of it is you need to be blogging. If you've built a website and you haven't done any blogging or social media, perhaps that's why you're not getting any traffic. The search engines don't, don't know you exist because you don't have content. So if you create a blog on your website or on blogger.com or WordPress or Facebook, you can blog on Facebook or LinkedIn, in any event, you still want to create content, preferably on your website, victor.com slash blog. I'm going to blog on my website. And once a month, I'm going to write 100 words. You're going to create this content. If you create good, if you create good content to share and help traffic, help you generate traffic. You've probably seen a lot of great articles online. Maybe you never really define them as blogs, but that's a very loose definition. It's basically internet articles. Um, a blog post. You've probably seen plenty of articles online. You really liked it and you shared it. Maybe you sent it to email through email to other people. That's great for the original writer because their content is being seen by more people. Maybe you saw an article, you really liked it, and you clicked the button to tweet about it. So now your 10 followers saw this article and you gave some free traffic to the original article. Well, on the flip side, I want that. I want people to see my great articles and share those articles to help me get more traffic. So get more shares on my blog posts from my site. Write articles that people want to read and people want to share. Get subscribers to my coupon newsletter. That one assumes a newsletter. WordPress which is the software that I recommend, has a built-in feature to be able to do newsletters. A feature where someone can click subscribe, basically. And every time you post a new blog post, create a new blog article, it will automatically email people with the article. Or you can do it the traditional way that, you know, once a week we're sending out an, a coupon to our newsletter subscribers. This is just another form of marketing to get you more traffic, to get you shares. Once I've got that traffic on my site, that's where I'm going to sell that cupcake, get those donations, whatever. The challenge with, pe with getting people to subscribe is why? Why would I subscribe again? Why would I give you my email? Are you a spammer? No, look at my legitimate website. Okay, well, great, you're not a spammer, but why would I subscribe to another newsletter? I already have a, a full inbox. Well, our newsletter has exclusive content. So think about why someone would want to subscribe. Why would someone give you their email? So maybe offer exclusive coupons, content, pre-release, 
content? What's in it for, for people to subscribe? I subscribe to the Fry's Electronics newsletter, and I love it and I hate it. Because every time I get it, I want to buy something. Because there's so many great things to buy at Fry's. It's the happiest place on earth, after all. So, that's their official tagline. And so, I see that newsletter, and I'm enticed a lot to buy something. Because it also says, use your exclusive coupon for 20% off. You don't get that 20% off unless you have that email. I've tried it. I've been in line, and I said, I'd like to buy this for 20% off. Great, show us your email. Oops, I deleted it. So, that's one way to, to entice people. You're going to get something out of our newsletter you're not going to see anywhere else. Subscribe. And once you've got their email, you can further market to them. Obviously, not in a spam way. But when someone subscribes to your newsletter, they're basically giving consent to be marketed to. You can, of course, lose that consent very easily. Someone can click unsubscribe, and then don't bother them again. You, you know, it is problematic. You will be labeled as a spammer. But if someone did subscribe to you, and they're getting that newsletter, judiciously, you can send out a once a week newsletter or a once a month or quarter or whatever that is informational and or also salesmanship. You know, they've said, yeah, here's my email. And maybe once a quarter, I will send out a special, everything on sale now, use this coupon to entice people. Uh, WordPress has one built in, but uh, this is also, you might have heard of MailChimp or Constant Contact. This, these are a couple of powerful newsletter sites, ranging from free to paid. I haven't seen very recently what their costs are, but I recall MailChimp, for example, you could have your first 2,000 subscribers for free. And then after that, there's various plans that you have to pay for. <clears throat> the built-in WordPress one is fine. But this, these are more powerful in that you, you can do different kinds of campaigns. These are really smart. Like you can have someone subscribe and right away they will get a newsletter that says, thank you for subscribing, you're going to get some great stuff. And then a week from their first subscription they will get a different email. And then let's say the person doesn't respond to any of the emails in three weeks. It will then automatically send a reminder, hey, are you still around? Check out what you're missing. You can set it pretty cool, pretty advanced. You've probably seen this yourself in your own inbox. How do they do that? They go to MailChimp, they go to Constant Contact, and other such providers. I've got here, get virtual clients, which are followers on social media, to come to my physical location. So this doesn't apply to everyone. Let's say I have Victor's Bakery and I have a real shop on Main Street. And I've got a thousand followers, and about a hundred of them are local. So somehow I have to use social media to entice those people that are local to come to the store. Because it's very easy for someone to follow, it's very easy for someone to like, it's very easy for someone to reply, but it's very hard for someone to click buy. The mouse suddenly gets very heavy. And then it's also even harder to get a real person to come to your location if they're if they're a follower online that's kind of a hard one to, to try to explain because it doesn't apply to everyone but strategize to in, entice followers to visit your locale Again, you're, you're, let's say you're using Instagram, and you've got a thousand followers on Instagram. You're going to post a great Instagram photo that says, Hey, San Diego people, we've got a special sale this Friday at our location. And you put the address. So everyone else that's not in San Diego are going to be saying, Oh, I wish I was in San Diego. That's good. You're getting traffic. You're getting uh, activity from the people that can't come. But hopefully then you're also getting some real activity from the real people that can come to your physical location. And if I do get those Twitter followers to actually come to my store, perhaps then I can accomplish my ultimate conversion goal right there. Ultimate conversion. 
sao cartridge. <cười> You should see that it's a long involved process from point A, a potential client follows you on Twitter, to point Z, the follower visits the store and buys the cupcake. That's why search engine optimization goes hand in hand with search engine marketing. It's very hard to get people to do real actions from social media. People would think, well, if only everyone that followed us on Twitter donated a dollar. We'd be set. My 5,000 followers. I could be making $5,000 off of Twitter if only I can get each of them to donate a dollar. That's a great dream. Very hard to make it come true because it's very hard for us to click that buy button. It's very easy to click like and maybe comment, but it's very hard to click buy, even if you've got the best website and the best content and all of that. So it's a long process of many ideas for marketing to try to make that ultimate conversion, the, the sale of the cupcake. I converted someone from a non-cupcake buyer to a cupcake buyer, but it took all this effort. I worked on Twitter, I, uh, I wrote blogs, uh, I got the clients to go there, and then I did the sale. I'm not saying you have to do all of these, but the more of these you engage in and others the more you could possibly get to the ultimate conversion. Let's say I'm a realtor. I want to sell houses. I could use Twitter for that. I can use Google Plus for that. I can use an email newsletter for that. I could write articles to use for that. All of these concepts can be used for any kind of business, really, if you think enough about it, and then accomplish the ultimate conversion. I just sold another million dollar house. But it does take effort and time. An emerging term that takes both into account, SEO, SEM, is content marketing. So you might have somewhat recently have heard of that term, SEO. Now you're wrapping your head around it. In the industry, we've got SEO, SEM, and now one that seems to be emerging is the term content marketing because it's going all back to the content. It's not just about five keywords, put them on my site. That is so 2010. We want to do all of this stuff, social media, YouTube, blogs, all of that, marketing. That's the modern way. So we're still going to be hearing the term SEO over and over and over, and sometimes you're going to he hear SEM, and maybe you're going to hear content marketing, but that's the term, the industry term, the buzzword that, that's starting to be more known. If you don't know it, no problem. You still think about it basically as synonymous with SEO. But it's about your content. Let's take a quick look at that link to see what it's about, click it, and it'll give you a definition about it, but then more tangibly, now this is going over to Forbes.com, and after you see the quote of the day, you can continue to cite, but then you will see a definition, what's content marketing, it goes on to explain it and such, but then five content marketing examples, okay, that's something tangible. Let me see. Infographics. Gives me an idea about create infographics that might get you more traffic. Web pages. Create a website to get you more sales. Maybe engage in podcasts. Create podcasts to help you get traffic. What about videos? Think about creating videos to help get you more traffic. What about books? Writing books, reviewing books. Etc. So just some quick examples about um, what to create and this article here might be a great article and notice I have the ability right here on the left to share. Let me tell my friends on Twitter about it, on LinkedIn. Let me email this to people. This is doing what that sheet is saying. Create content to be shared. And this has got 87,000 views. We can try to figure out, okay, what's the ultimate conversion here? They're giving away this content, they're getting traffic, but what's the point? I could possibly see, very obviously nowadays, a lot of times, the big goal is ads. 
people go read my blog and I've got a great blog but I want to make money off of it so I can put ads on my blog. Maybe not obtrusive ads that I've seen before, annoying ads, you know, judicial ads, restraint ads. But here I see two spots with ads. Something about document signing. That might be valuable for my business. I'm a lawyer and I need to get more clients and I read that great article and I just saw the corner of my eye. Hey, I do need this digital document signing. Let me click. Well, I benefited because I got that service and they benefited because they made money off of that ad. You can make ads, you can make money off of your website by putting ads there. If you go look up, this is totally off topic, but if you go look up Google AdSense, not AdWords, AdSense, you can go create a free account there and basically Google will give you an account where then you can add advertisements to your site and when people click those you'll make some money off of it. That could be a goal for you. I'm not trying to sell things but I'm writing my thoughts. I have a great political blog and I want people to read it. Well great, that's one conversion. People reading my articles but another one could be making money off of my opinions. And I can do that with affiliate links, AdSense, and so forth. Yes? How many viewers or impressions did you actually get the site paying for you? The short answer is the short answer is a lot, unfortunately. So, you know, eighty seven thousand views is viable, but that's eighty seven thousand views. So the more you do it, the more you get active and be and create social media traffic and such, the the better. And in, in the uh, control panel of AdSense, it'll tell you, um, if, because everyone's niche is different, and it'll tell you there how many hits you got, which translated to how much money, and so forth, so you can extrapolate. Uh, so this article has the ability to share, the ability to comment, it's well written, it's from a big company, Forbes. Maybe their other goal is also for people to subscribe to the paid version of Forbes. You know, give away a free article and then a way to then sell articles. So page two here is a variety of kinds of goals that you could have to create conversions. I'll show you a list of other examples in a moment, but any questions so far? All of these are ideas of what you can do online to market, to get you traffic and sales. Let me show you another, another list. Let's go to the web. And let's go to this website. This is one of my colleagues. And uh, they've got a website, brandgfx.com slash blog. It's brandgraphics.com blog slash blog. There's a blog here. This is a marketing website, a marketing firm. Um, there's a blog here. There's a, there's a particular post I want to look at, but the blog is full of a lot of, uh, <clears throat> a lot of uh, articles on, on marketing. Let's go to this website, brandgfx.com, it's pronounced brand graphics. Go to the site, and then on the, on the right side you will see, okay, searching for, what are you searching for? Um, Let's search on the right side here the word comprehensive. Search for the keyword comprehensive. Search for comprehensive and you should see at the top result the comprehensive list of ways to market your business. Click on that article and then we'll, we'll talk about it briefly. Yes, we know this list is by no means comprehensive. 
but it's better than calling it the almost comprehensive, always expanding, never complete list of ways to market your business. This article is just about possible ideas to think about to market, to get traffic, to get attention online. This would be the perfect article if there were links for a definition or tangible examples. But let's say, okay, podcasts, I don't know what that is. You can, on your web browser, you should be able to select any keyword, right click it, and most likely there will be a search there. So you can still go look it up somewhere. Maybe on this article, you can leave a comment at the bottom that says, would you be able to link or explain these? But anyway, you can search for more info, and all of these are examples of what you could do, such as video marketing, like on YouTube, create podcasts, go to trade shows, write blogs, so just a bunch of ideas, not tangible, meaning step-by-step, -step, but ideas to think about to do. Maybe holding contests or sweepstakes. Find a university or professional course in your arena and offer to be a guest speaker. So what if you're very knowledgeable in uh, financial planning and you become a guest speaker at some class on economics? Uh, best case or worst case scenario, people clap and you feel good that you taught. Best case scenario, someone comes up to you after the break and says, can I have your business card? You seem very knowledgeable, I want to hire you. Even if you don't get paid for that, you could get some leads out of it, some impressions, which become conversions. All of these possible ideas for you to market. And uh, This was updated last year. Notice it was written in 2013 and then it was updated in 2015 and it'll probably be updated again because this stuff changes all the time. But this blog here can be shared. There's a share button. There's right there you can share. Send it off to these other networks. More traffic. And the ultimate conversion goal of this company? Services. Branding, creative, or marketing. Maybe hire them for the branding, hire them for this and that. So the ultimate goal here is to get clients for this. So here's the tagline, branding and graphic design for successful marketing. There's an about page and contact and blog and everything. So any questions on, on page two before we go back to page one? A lot of work to sell a cupcake. Yes. Hope it's a high markup cupcake. <laughs> yep, it's a truffle, <laughs> foie gras, caviar topped cupcake. Not vegan. <laughs>